Hey everyone, this is Miss Erin from the Breckenridge Public Library. Today we are sharing some songs and stories about our neighborhoods. The first story I want to share with you today is called Say Hello by Rachel Isadora. In this story, we're going to learn how to say hello in nine different languages. Feel free to repeat the phrase along with me as Carmelita greets her neighbors. There we go. Carmelita gets up early in the morning. She helps her mama make their favorite breakfast, huevos con tocino. Today, we visit Abuela Rosa, mama says. After breakfast, Carmelita hurries and gets dressed, then gets Manny. There's Manny. They walk all the way down 9th Street. Buenos dias, Senor Enrico calls. Buenos dias. Shalom, says Mrs. Rosen and her children. Shalom. They stop in the Japanese restaurant to say hello. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Manny wants to greet them as well. He says, woof. Down the street, they meet Joseph and his parents who have just come back from Kenya. Jumbo, Jumbo. They pass by a bakery. Carmelita stops to look in the window. Let's go in and get some cookies, her mama says. Bonjour, bonjour. Woof, woof. Your dog speaks French too, the woman says, smiling. Here they are outside the halal butchery. Assalam alaikum, assalam alaikum. And outside the pizza restaurant. Ciao, ciao. Ni hao, ni hao. Woof. Hey, yo, what's up? Woof. In the park, Carmelita meets her friends, Max and Angel. You are one, sno one smart Snoop Dogg, Angel says. When they turn the corner, Abuela Rosa is waiting for them. Hola! Hola! Woof! Manny seems to know what I'm saying, Abuela Rosa says with a wink. Manny knows how to say hello in many languages, Carmelita says, smiling. Jingle, jingle! It's the ice cream truck, Abuela Rosa says. Woof! That means Manny wants some too, Carmelita says, and gives Manny a big hug. Do you remember the hellos that we learned in this book? In Arabic, we learned assalam a alaikum. In French, we learned bonjour. In Spanish, we learned buenos dias. In Italian, we learned ciao. In Spanish, we also learned hola. In Swahili, we learned jumbo. In Japanese, we learned konnichiwa. In Mandarin or Chinese, we learned ni hao. And in Hebrew, we learned shalom. Wow, there are so many people in our neighborhoods. Let's play a little game called What's My Job? to see if you know who some of them are. I'm going to sing a little song with a clue about what they do, and you can guess, help me guess which person we are singing about. 
feel free to join in and sing along. Let's see if we can get everybody up here on our screen. There we go. All right. What is my job? What is my job? Can you guess? Can you guess? I help people get well. I help people get well. Who am I? Who am I? All right. When you are feeling sick or injured, where do you usually go? Do you usually go visit the trash collector? Or to the dentist? No? Oh, you go to the doctor. You're right. Yep, we can see his little stethoscope there around his neck. All right. What is my job? What is my job? Can you guess? Can you guess? I drive you around the town. I drive you around the town. Who am I? Who am I? All right. Let's see. Well, in order to drive, you need some keys. Can you see which person is holding keys in their hands? Did you guess the bus driver? You're right. There she is. And she even has a picture of a bus on her shirt. Good job. What is my job? What is my job? Can you guess? Can you guess? I help you find books to read. I help you find books to read. Who am I? Who am I? Do you guys know the answer to this question? Let's see. They help you find books to read. Do you see somebody up here who has some books in their hands? Mm. Did you guess the librarian? You're right. What is my job? What is my job? Can you guess? Can you guess? I deliver lots of mail. I deliver lots of mail. Who am I? Who am I? Hmm. Do you think the veterinarian delivers a lot of mail? No? Do you think the crossing guard delivers a lot of mail? Not that either? Oh, you're right, the postal worker. And you can even see they have some letters in their hand to deliver. Good job. What is my job? What is my job? Can you guess? Can you guess? I help people cross the street. I help people cross the street. Who am I? Who am I? Well, when we want to cross the street, we want the cars to be stopped, right? Well, do you see anybody up here who is holding a stop sign? What's that? Oh, the crossing guard. You're right. Good guess right here, the crossing guard. She's even got a whistle to let people know that someone is trying to cross the street. Great. All right. What is my job? What is my job? Can you guess? Can you guess? I help keep the city clean. I help keep the city clean. Who am I? Who am I? Who up here helps us keep the city clean? Oh, did you guess the trash collector right here with the trash can beside him? Great guess. You're right. All right, and let's see. What is my job? What is my job? Can you guess? Can you guess? I help injured animals. I help injured animals. Who am I? Who am I? All right. Oh, do you see any animals up here? I think I spot somebody who's holding an animal. Could it be? The veterinarian? Yeah. All right, last one. What is my job? What is my job? Can you guess? Can you guess? 
I take care of people's teeth. I take care of people's teeth. Who am I? Who am I? The last person up here that we haven't guessed, can you spot them? It's the dentist. You can see he's wearing a mask over his face and he's holding some dental tools here to take care of your teeth. Let's share one more story. This book is called Last Stop on Market Street. This one is by Matt De La Pena. And we can see some street and buildings. I like the color in this book. CJ pushed through the church doors, skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella saying, how come we gotta wait for the bus in all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but never saw a straw. Can you see? This giant tree trunk, kind of like a straw. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of nearby cars. His friend Colby climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire. And old Mr. Dennis, who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged and the doors swung open. What's that I see? Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. The bus lurched forward and stopped, lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always got to go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I heard Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses, too, the man said, sniffing the air. <laughs> That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on and stood in the back. See there, listening to some music. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana sat down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask that man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking the strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered. I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves, 
saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound, and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arcing over the soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again, at the bus rounding the corner out of sight, and the broken street lamps still lit up bright, and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted the familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ. Now, come on. Can you see CJ and Nana helping serve soup? And there they are, getting back on the bus, or waiting for the bus to take them back home. Wow, I liked learning about our neighborhood today. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.